Hello everyone, Eric, KJ4YZI, with a video here to add to my channel about a new radio I just purchased and got it in and tested it and I'm quite pleased with it uh, and I wanted to share it with you. This is a new manufacturer. This is a Lueton from China. This is a Chinese based company and I was on the market looking for uh, a high power handheld and you see me do the reviews of the GT3 8 watt and the UV5R 8 watt. And then I ran across this company and they advertise an 8 watt, I'm sorry, a 10 watt VHF handheld. And this is the LT188H. There's two models, a 5 watt and a 10 watt, and optional high capacity battery. Okay, so I'm going to show you uh, about this. I'll show you the power test, make sure that it is what it claims to be 10 watts, and uh, the basic, very easy to use programming software. So this is commercial classified as a business two-way radio okay um, and you'll see the difference between the 188 and 188H is the high power the 10 watt version that's what I have here um, but they say business two-way radio but this is fully compatible on VHF 2 meters 136 to 174 megahertz out of the box so let me show you what it comes with uh, I've already unpacked this tested it used it programmed it and I uh, put it back in the box to show you how it comes so first you'll get the card and this is their business card with their information on it for contact this is uh, this company specializes from my understanding they specialize in business to business sales but they're moving into the business to customer market and they have not been around they're not a new company they've been around for 11 years so they've been around just not on the internet where you see on eBay or Amazon so you'll see them soon Okay, and, and they give you this product catalog. Um, they have pretty nice product in here, I have to say. If you look on their website, you'll see they have CB radios. They have VHF, UHF, dual band radios, marine radios. And a lot of them are not clones, but the same models as Yesu and Kenwood and Icon. These are their two um, DMR radios that they have. They have quite uh, a selection of the digital radios, which I'm getting into DMR now. But they have dual band, single band, uh, mobile radios, commercial. There's your UV5R that you're used to. They have those. But look at this. The picture here of the ICOM mobile radio with the Luton manufacturing name on it. So these items here claim to be comparable to ICOM. Uh, and you may get them at a cost less than the big three. So you might want to check out their website and see what they got. Uh, this is the instruction manual. Now, this is not a lot of information in here. It's a very basic radio. This is good for the person that doesn't use all the bells and whistles, that doesn't want to get confused with changing the settings on the radio or bumping the channels, uh, or preppers if you want two high-powered radios or even four high-powered radios to go out uh, for prepping or to go out hunting just to use between two people or multiple people instead of getting the little FRS radios from Walmart uh, you can get one of these and this will substantially outperform the little half a watt Midland or Cobra radios so these will definitely do a lot better so the body of the radio first you get the radio and you'll see the hand strap here and the belt clip I already put these on they come with it um, the battery and again there's a, a standard battery and a high capacity battery this is the high capacity for the 10 watt, which I ordered and recommend for you because uh, the higher power, the more usage uh, drain you're going to have. So this is the 2800 milliamp high capacity battery, and it goes on very easily like such. It goes right on. Okay. comes with an antenna, of course. What good is a radio without an antenna, right? VHF 136 to 174 tuned antenna, it says. All right. Same connector as the Bofeng and Ushan radios, SMA. So your existing radios uh, or existing aftermarket antennas or your existing connectors will fit on this radio. As well as your existing Bofeng and Ushan programming cable and speaker mics will fit in the same connector. So you don't have to go buying a new one. Okay? You don't have to buy a new programming cable. It comes with the programming cable. You can download the software. There's a link below the video for the uh, software and the charger now notice that this charger is different than what you've seen in my other videos with the Bofeng and the Ushan radios it doesn't have the drop-in base 
for uh, dropping the radio in. It has a mini USB plug on the back of the battery here. And this is similar to a lot of devices you may see that have uh, the mini Type-B USB here. However, you can't charge this from a computer, so don't try it. This is actually a 12 volt charger with just the mini USB on the battery. So you can charge this battery without being attached to the radio instead of having to uh, put it on the radio. If you get multiple batteries, you can charge them all off the radio. Okay. Um, so that's a proprietary charger. This charger doesn't fit any other Bofung or Ushan radios. So very simple to use. You notice there's no screen on the front. So this is a 16 channel programmable radio. And instead of having the channel selector on the top, like uh, the BF888 Bofung or some of the other ones, it has a channel up and down selector. So it'll read off one through 16. So when you turn the radio on, two. Okay, you'll hear it'll tell you by pushing up or down. One, two, three. What channel you're on, okay? And once you program these, you might want to keep a list with you on what channel frequency one is, frequency two, or frequency for channel two, for channel three, okay? So that way you know what channel you're on. Um, it has a flashlight, just like the Bofung and Pofung radios do, which is useful out in the hunting or prepping or whatever you want to do. Uh, again, the connector on the side for your speaker mic and programming cable is compatible with the existing ones you have with Ushan and Bofung, so you don't have to buy a new one. It does have, on the left side here, it has a monitor button so you can break the squelch. And this is the button you're going to use when you program the scan in the programming software. You would tap this button to enable the scan, and it would run through the 16 channels and stop on the frequency that is in use, and then if you don't use it within five seconds or it doesn't hear anything within five seconds, it's going to continue scanning. So it does have a scan function. It does have a flashlight. It does have uh, the channel up and down here in the front, and it, you can lock the buttons here by holding the middle function button here. That's locked, so you can't accidentally change the channel. Seven. So you unlock it. That's locked there. And hold it again. That's unlocked. Eight. Nine. Ten. Okay. So, again, not a lot of features compared to another radio, but it is, it is strictly to get you doing what you need to do. But the opposite side of that conversation is you have the 10 watts of high power. So you're over double the power of a traditional UV5R or GT3. And not a lot of stuff to have to get confused with on the radio. This is good for newcomers to the hobby. This would be a great raffle gift for a ham, uh, for a ham fest or uh, a new radio for a newcomer who passed their exam for the amateur radio license. You can give them one of these, have it pre-programmed for them or show them how to program it and they have their 16 channels. And that way you don't have to confuse the new person or the person that has a hard time seeing. So I'll give you a quick uh, demonstration here. Channel 1. KJ4YZI for a test. W4DHK repeater. It's got a loudspeaker on it. Sure sounds loud and clear. This KTHK area before easy. Hey Richard, this is Eric, KJ4YZI, just testing the radio on a video, making sure that it has a nice clean audio. Well, it sounds pretty good. It's uh, certainly. Got a lot of presents to it. There you go. All right, Richard, I won't hold you. I'll get back to my video making. KJ4YZI73. Okay. AB4EZ, clear, bud. Standing by. And there you go. There's a net coming up soon. So, uh, But hey, uh, he had no idea I was getting on that radio. So uh, there you have it. There's an audio test rate for you. That repeater's about six, about six miles away from me. And I will tell you that... If I change this frequency here, okay? One, two, three, four. Now here is a frequency that I have programmed in Melbourne, which is about 30 plus miles from me. Four, F, L, V, repeater. 
and the other night I was talking to a fellow on there, and he had no, he did not believe me that I was on a 10 watt handheld, that he never heard of one, and that I was in Sebastian talking to him in Melbourne. He said, "You're full quiet, and I can't believe that you're in your house talking on it." And there's the proof. So, uh, let's get to the power test and show you exactly uh, what it's doing on power. Okay, here's the power test on my analog power meter of the Luton LT 188H. This is a SMA adapter to a PL259 cable for my power meter. You'll see we're on the 15 watt scale, so the second row of numbers, 0, 5, 10, and 15, that would be the scale we're reading. And as I transmit, 10 watts. Right on the nose. watts fully charged battery and that is on 146520 with a outdoor antenna so there you have it 10 watts from a hand okay look below this video in the description you should see a link to the programming software that I have put on a, a file sharing site for you once you go ahead and download that and install it you should have an icon on your desktop like this LT 188H double click this icon this will take you to the programming software now, this programming software is very basic. It's very easy to use, just like a lot of the other Bofeng and Ushan radios that you're familiar with. First thing is, plug your USB programming cable in. Make sure you know what port you're on. Once you find your COM port in the device manager, click on Set, go to Communication Port, and this will be where you choose the port. Mine, in this situation, is 10. Yours may be 5 or 9 or whatever. Once you pick your COM port, turn your radio on. Make sure it's on a uh, un unused frequency or a clear frequency click on program and choose read data it should start reading pretty quickly give you a finished button here and this is the 16 channels now a couple of these I've programmed in here for testing and such uh, a lot of these will be full, all of these will be full from the manufacturer with generic frequencies so uh, very simple to use I'll do a couple right now for you for instance um, one of the repeaters in my area the receive frequency, the output of the repeater is 146.64. The transmit input frequency is 146.04. Now, this will not automatically calculate your offset. You should know by your technician class, license, or exam that the offset on VHF 2 meters is negative or positive 0.600 kilohertz. If you don't know that, you need to go back and restudy your te technician class license. That is very basic knowledge. So. 146640 is the output of the repeater. The input on this situation is negative 0.600. And the tones. Now, someone asked me the other day, why does these Chinese radios, why do these Chinese radios have a decode and encode on the programming software? You don't need to set anything in the in, in the decode here, only in the encode. Uh, unless you have a specific purpose or reason where you have to decode and encode the tone, leave it off. The encoder here for the CTCSS in my situation is 107.2. Every repeater has its own tone or it may not have a tone. In that situation, you'd turn the tone off. But it also has, for commercial and business band use, all the DCS tones here on the bottom. So you can use that in a commercial application, such as a business construction site, store, what have you. The transmit power, high or low, might as well leave it on high unless you have a need to keep it on low. Scan add is only for when you're scanning the 16 channels. If you want this frequency and channel to be scanned, you would leave it on add. So having all these add would scan all 16 channels. Channel spacing, wide or narrow, if, you don't, if you're unsure, leave it on wide if you don't know. And the busy lock, that's for when you're scanning. If the channel is busy, it will lock onto that channel. Uh, I usually leave it to unlock. Uh, it doesn't serve me any purpose. So, very simple. Uh, once you set up your 16 channels, go up here to Edit and click on Option Features. This is the other screen that's important. Set your squelch level, your timeout timer. Uh, I'm sure you want this in English unless you want it in Chinese, or you could turn the voice prompt off. The Vox function, you can set the Vox. This is this applies to all 16 channels when you set this parameter here, not just one channel. So if you want your Vox on, you would check that here and set the parameters. The beep here is useful to make sure you know you're pushing the button. Uh, battery save. This was on on mine by default. I keep it off. 
the battery save when the when the radio is not being used goes into a low power state to save the battery. However, it won't let you change the channel or use any of the uh, you know uh, scanning or change like that. It'll be just in a hibernation until it hears something, then it wakes up. So I would keep this off unless you want to keep it on to save your battery. Once you set these parameters, click OK. I would recommend going to File and saving this param this uh, programming configuration into a file in case you lose it or you want to get another radio and you just want to copy it all over you can just open it later and program all these same frequencies and settings into your new radio when you're done go to program click on write data to radio and it takes a matter of three seconds and it says finished the radio is now programmed with those parameters and it's ready to go